Now I'm getting ready to do some work on this hand to catch it up with the rest of the picture of the face and the neck area. Let me wet it so my paint can flow again. I'm just looking at the picture and mimicking the shadow areas and putting them where I see them on the picture. Not perfectly, just loosely, but I, I am trying to put everything in the general area where it's supposed to be. I'm going to let that dry now. Okay, I'm going to get back on Cicely's portrait here, but I want to show you something first. Be Sometimes before you move on with painting over what has dried, because if you remember the last thing I told you was I'm going to let this dry. Well, if you remember while I'm painting wet and wet, I'm trying to keep light areas light so I'm blotting in there and then it'll keep running and then I'm blotting and then it'll keep running well sometimes you're unable to control all of it while it's wet and after it dries you might have to go back so right in this area right here here's the nose but right close to this eye if you look on the picture you'll see that right there see there the eye is and then there's that shadow under the eye and then all of this light area right here. Well, that's right here. And some of the dark has bled into that area. So I'm gonna try to clean up some of those things. If, if you want something light, well, then you have to leave it light or make sure it's light before you move on because the more you cover over this, the harder it's gonna be. And some colors are easier to lift than others. That's why it's good for you to go and practice and work with your colors and find out which ones are staining colors that will stain the paper and which ones are easy to lift out. So I'm not going to show you every single area that I'm going to do this here, but I'm just going to show you with this area here uh, again how I'm going to do that. I wet the brush and it's not soaking wet. I got some of the water out of it. So it's just damp and moist. And I'm just kind of getting some water in there and softening up the paint that's inside of the paper. Softening it up in the area where I don't want it. 
And then you can take a paper towel and kind of blotch it dry and see how you're doing. And I'm not scrubbing hard, I'm just lightly scrubbing back and forth to try to loosen that paint up. So that's what I'm going to do in any areas where I think I need to bring the light back out and I'll be back. I'm going to start to work on some details. Not very detailed, but I mean just bringing out the area of the eyes, the mouth the nose by adding some darks in and there's going to be some darks within the darks that I already have laid out also and I'm going to be using the color Alizarin and Crimson and for now since I would like to take my time and build up slowly I'm going to be putting the color on lightly in the areas where I want it and then I can go on top of that later. looking at the picture to see where the shadow pattern is and I'm really just kind of using this color to kind of enhance the shadow pattern that I already have laid out. Notice how I'm still utilizing this big brush even though I'm working in smaller areas. So I'm not so worried about details right now. And if you notice this is just a very subtle change of color. It's Nothing major, but where it helps me is, is now if I want to transition to another color, like a dark, like a darker color um, in the blue area, where the blue might not look good on this color that I painted first. Because I now have that Alizarin Crimson down and blue does match Alizarin Crimson, painting it, painting the darks into that area where the red is, Alizarin Crimson actually, the blue is going to match better. So I'm actually kind of doing this as a transition color too. And I'm not even saying I'm going to use blue. I'm just letting you know that sometimes you can be putting on a color in anticipation of another color later. So now there's just a little touch of dark there where I can come back in and put the, the real dark around the edges there. And if I wanted to put it in blue, it's going to match better on top of that Alvazera Crimson. I'm just I'm just talking out loud and letting you hear how I plan ahead for some things. But notice this, where it's light, where I want the light hitting, I'm leaving that light. I'm not bothering that at all. The only thing I'm making sure of with, with, with those areas is that whenever I put a color around it like I just did, I make sure that colors are softly blended into that area and there's no hard lines. And it's going to be about time for me to do something to the hair because again I want the values to be matching and however dark the hair is is going to dictate whether I've got all of this dark or not let me tell you why right quick the darker you make something the lighter everything else seems so I want this hair to be of an overall value where it's going to match the values that I've already told you I liked here. So if I make sure that I build that up slowly, then I can look at it and say, okay, I can stop now. Now there will be some darker darks inside of the 
main value of the hair, but I'm gonna have that main value of, of her hair more gray than black. The darker I make that hair, the lighter it's gonna make everything else look. And since I like this the way it is, I need to be careful about not making the hair too dark. Okay, I've got it dry now and I'm gonna get back and I'm really ready to do more here, but I gotta catch that ear up. And